babies are dependent on cow's milk for their very lives. It would be hard for the human race to get along without our foster mother, the cow. Modern dairy farms are the symbol of cleanliness with their neat corrals, white fences, and tidy barns. Jim, the work foreman, is taking food to the different corrals. Dobbin and Black Beauty are trained to haul the wagon through the network of farm lanes and gates. The cows have three meals, one in the morning, one at noon, and one in the evening. Part of the cow's food is mixed in the silo and is made up of alfalfa, oats, hay, and molasses. Some of their food is raised on the farm. Other food includes such things as cotton seed, linseed, and barley. The diet is carefully arranged to give the cow strength and to increase her milk supply. Beretta drinks daintily. Perhaps the water is too cold. She will drink about 10 gallons a day. The crystal clear water shows the high standard of care on this modern farm. It takes a lot of work and scrubbing to keep the barns, stalls, and troughs clean. Every minute in the cow's life is planned so that she will produce a quantity of pure, rich milk. Cows tend to pick out certain other cows for their special friends. One finds them together day after day, sometimes with their necks crossed or just resting near each other. Salt is kept in the troughs at all times because cows, like people, must have their minerals and vitamins. The bulls have individual paddocks. These bulls are fine, strong specimens and should have the best of calves. They are carefully handled, so they're gentle. Special food builds their huge frames and gives them power. This bull, named Bet, has a good appetite. It takes a lot of food to fill up these animals. They have four stomachs. Did you ever try to hit a bullseye? Well, now's your chance. The superintendent proudly shows a year-old bull to a buyer, Mr. Allen. This bull is the son of Bet and shows his fine breeding and excellent care. A bull is led by a ring in his nose because this has been found the most practical for the farmer and the best for the bull. Mr. Allen likes the massive frame, the straight back, the fine big hindquarters, the wide spring of the ribs, the clean legs, and the well-set beautiful head. Mr. Allen buys this bull for $700. Mrs. Crooked Horns enjoys an afternoon's rest. Did your mother ever tell you you were as awkward as a cow? When she eats, the cow first swallows her food almost whole. Later, it comes back up in the form of cud and is rechewed. Watch carefully, and you can see the cow bring up her cud. Oh, you missed. Watch more carefully. There it goes. A large mouth is a point of beauty in a cow. She must be a good eater to produce a quantity of milk. About every three months, cows must be clipped. The state law demands that their udders and tails be clipped so they will be free from hair. A dairyman clips the heads of his cows so they will show off their fine points. The horns are cut off if the cow is rough or if the horns are deformed. Good horns are a point of beauty. Milking time, four o'clock in the afternoon. Each milking lasts two hours. The milkers bring the cows in from the different corrals to the milking barns. The milkers wash the barns and sterilize the buckets before each milking. 
every cow will go directly to her own stall or stanchion. The cows look forward to the milking because they are fed at this time and also their bags feel tight and would get sore if they were not milked regularly. Geralda is let out for a special demonstration of milking. She holds many state records. For three consecutive years, she has produced over 20,000 pounds of milk. Geralda has the soapy nose of the moo cow moo. A healthy cow has a wet nose because cows only perspire through their noses. Geralda is worth $10,000 and her calves are very valuable too. Geralda's udder has already been washed, and now it is carefully wiped. Everything is done to ensure pure milk, free from harmful bacteria. Each cow is an individual and must be handled differently. The skilled milker has rhythm in his long strokes. Jim is careful in working around the cow not to upset her. If she gets excited, she may hold her milk. Oh, boss. Steady there. That's it, be a good bossy. Oh, girl, easy. Geralda wears her farm identification number around her horns. She is a fine example of a Guernsey cow with her straight back and large, deep body. An average milking for one cow is four gallons. Some cows give as much as eight gallons. At the milk house, Daily records are kept of the weight of each cow's milk. Monthly tests are made by a milk tester from the state university to determine the amount of butterfat. This herd has a fine butterfat record, a characteristic of Guernsey cows. Well, Dobbin and Black Beauty are still busy making the rounds of the different corrals. Now it is time to feed the calves that are eight months old. Each age has special food and special care. Any dairyman would be proud of this line of purebreds. Here are the barns for the very young calves. The calves are taken from their mothers when they are a day old because these highly bred cows have milk too rich for the babies. Ed has charge of the mothers and calves. First, the babies must be taught to drink from a bucket. Special things like calf meal are added to their diet, like a baby's formula. This baby already trusts Ed. Like the cows, the calves spend several hours a day in their pastures. Ed trains them to be gentle and affectionate. Guernsey cows are famous for their good dispositions. These calves represent the fulfillment of a dairyman's dream with their exquisite intelligent heads, graceful strong bodies, and beautiful fawn-colored coats. Calves are inquisitive like children and watch everything that goes on around them. Princess May of Green Meadows has a baby, Daisy, just an hour and a half old. Each mother and calf have their own corral. May dries off her calf and cares for her, and Daisy responds to mother's affection. Cows tell their own babies by their sense of smell. One of the first things the calf tries to do is to stand up. Come on. Oh, too bad. It is the natural impulse for all mothers to guard their babies, and the cow has a deeper maternal instinct than any other animal. The neighboring cows are jealous and wish Daisy belonged to them. Cows want every calf they see. Daisy wants food. A calf is born with its eyes open, but Daisy seems to be having trouble finding her dinner. It isn't here, or here, 
or here. But she will look until she finds it, and nature will tell her what to do when she does find it. And so we leave Princess May, mothering not only her own baby, but in reality, the whole human race.